Hello, hello, all you courageous men and women and boys and girls. So glad you're with me today. And we are studying the courageous men and women of the Bible. And we are in 1 Kings, 1 Kings 20, chapter 21 today. Now, <clears throat> remember, King Ahab is a very wicked king married to a very wicked woman whose name is Jezebel. And remember that Jezebel had chased uh, Elijah off. He had run away. He was afraid of her. And God took care of him. And now Elijah has uh, been told that Elisha is going to take his place. But in the meantime, <clears throat> Elijah is still the prophet and Elisha is in training. Now, have you ever been jealous of what someone else has? We've all been a little jealous of what someone else has. But it's not right to be jealous. We need to learn how to be excited and happy when people get things. Because there's enough for everyone and there's enough for us as well, isn't there? Jealousy can turn into some pretty ugly things. Well, in today's story, there was a man named Naboth from Jezreel, and Jezreel uh, is where King Ahab is. In fact, they were next door neighbors. And he owned, Naboth owned a vineyard next to the palace. So King Ahab would see it every day. And one day Ahab was looking out there and oh, he wanted Naboth's garden so badly. He went to Naboth and he said, since your vineyard is so convenient to my palace, I would like to buy it to use as a vegetable garden. I will give you a better vineyard in exchange, or if you prefer, I'll pay you for it. But Naboth replied, the Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance that was passed down from my ancestors. So it wasn't just a piece of land that Naboth didn't care about. It had been passed down from generation to generation to generation. Kind of like our family farm where we live right now. Kevin's great-great-grandfather homesteaded here. It's been in our family for many, many years, way over a hundred years. I think it's like 130 or something now. I've lost track. So it's very, it's very special. It's land that's been in his family. But Ahab, instead of just saying, okay, I understand, he went home angry and he threw a fit and he was humping around and, oh, he went to bed. He wouldn't even eat. He went to bed and sulked and through a little pity party. Have you ever done that? I probably have too, but this is a grown-up adult man and he is throwing a big pity party. And so his wife Jezebel says, what's the matter with you? Why are you so upset that you're not even eating? That we're in verse four now, verse five. And he said, why well, asked Naboth to sell me his vineyard or trade for it, but he refused. So Jezebel, being the wicked woman, she, so, <clears throat> sorry, we got interrupted there. So Jezebel is, are you not the king? <clears throat> What's the matter with you? <clears throat> get up and eat something and don't worry about it. I'll get you Naboth's vineyard. So the wicked queen says that she will get her husband that vineyard. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal. In other words, she used the king's name and the king's seal, not her own. And she sent them out to the elders and the leaders where Naboth lived, and she told them to call all the citizens together for fasting and prayer and to give Naboth a place of honor. <clears throat> and then to seat two scandals across from him who will accuse him of cursing God <clears throat> and the king, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> and take him out and stone him to death. Is that not ridiculous? So it's really a trap. And it's, 
dishonest. She's lying and she's setting him up and she's having them lie and take part in murder. So the elders and the other townspeople followed her instructions. The elders and the townspeople were wimps. They were not courageous, were they? They should have known what was right and what was wrong and been courageous. But they were not courageous. So they did exactly as Jezebel said. And they set up the, the, the honor, the beautiful dinner. And then they accused him of cursing God and the king. So he was dragged outside of the town and he was stoned to death. And the town leaders sent word to Jezebel that Naboth has been stoned to death. And when Jezebel heard the news, she said to Ahab, You know that vineyard Naboth wouldn't sell you? Well, you can have it now. He's dead. So Ahab immediately went down to the vineyard and Naboth to claim it. <clears throat> he cared more about getting a piece of property than he cared about human life. How do you think God's going to feel about that? You're right. It's going to make God very angry because there's nothing more precious than a person created in the image of God, is there? So in verse 17, the Lord told Elijah, who is his prophet, to go down to meet King Ahab of Israel. And um, he's claiming Naboth's vineyard for himself. And he tells him to give him a message. And this is what the message is. He says, wasn't it enough that you killed Naboth? Must you rob him too? Because you have done this, dogs will lick your blood at the very place where they licked the blood of Naboth. Hmm. So, Elijah is, has courage again to face Ahab. He's going right back into the palace where he ran away from, <clears throat> full of courage to tell King Ahab the message from the Lord. And Ahab sees Elijah and he says, So, my enemy, you found me. And Elijah says, Yes, I have come because you have sold yourself to what is evil in the Lord's sight. So now the Lord says, I will bring disaster on you and consume you. I will destroy every one of your male descendants, slave and free alike, anywhere in Israel. I'm going to destroy your family as I did the family of Jer Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and the family of Basha, son of Ahijah. For you have made me very angry and have led Israel into sin. And regarding Jezebel, the Lord says, Dogs will eat Jezebel's body at the plot of land in Jezreel. The members of Ahab's family who die in the city will be eaten by dogs, and those who die in the field will be eaten by vultures. So the Lord was very unhappy with the evilness of Ahab. And in verse 25, it tells us that no one else so completely sold himself to what was evil in the Lord's sight as Ahab did under the influence of his wife Jezebel. You know, in the worship of idols and so many other evil things that he did. And I just want to say, who you marry, the decision of who you marry is one of the most important decisions you'll ever make in your life. You want to be sure that you marry someone who has a heart after God, just like you so that you'll be in agreement and that you'll always seek to do what is good and what is right and then to encourage each other because not only was he evil but he even did more evil because he married the evil uh, woman Jezebel and it's the same way with friendships we have to be very careful to be yes we can be kind to all people but to be close friends, we need to be sure that we are being influenced by people who have the same heart and the same goodness that you have. Because if they have a different idea about maybe they want to be bullies and maybe they want to do things that are wrong, if you continue to run with them, you will be influenced by them. So you want to protect yourself in your closest friendships, that you have people that you want to be like and who... Uh, they want to be like you and so you can agree and um, encourage each other to always do what is right so their interesting thing happens in verse 27 even though Ahab was one of the most evil kings who ever lived 
Look what happens in verse 27. When Ahab heard this message of what God was going to do, he tore his clothing, dressed in burlap, and fasted. He even slept in burlap and went about in deep mourning. That means he was repentant. He believed what God said, and he was very upset about what he had done. So even Ahab, even the most evil person, when they repent, do you think God will hear? You betcha. God loves Ahab just as much as he loved Elijah, but he wanted Ahab to follow him. So the Lord came to Elijah and he said, Do you see how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has done this, I will not do what I promised during his lifetime. It will happen to his sons. I will destroy his dynasty. So there were still consequences to what Ahab did. He was going to take Ahab's family out of the dynasty, out of being kings for, you know, generation after generation. But it didn't happen in Ahab's lifetime because he repented. Isn't that amazing? So even Ahab in this story today ended up having some amazing courage to believe God and to humble himself and put himself into a position that he had not been in before because he was always against God and did not believe in the power of God. So I hope that even though this is just an awful wild story, I hope that we can learn something from it today and that is to be courageous to have friends, good close friends, and not be associated with those who would take us on evil paths. And notice I'm not saying that you can't be kind to people, all people, but for your close friends that you share your heart with and you spend the time with, you need to protect yourself. And then to be courageous to confront people. In this case, Elijah had to confront the king again, didn't he? And also, to be courageous to say that you're wrong and to repent and to be <laughs> to be sorry for what you've done that takes courage too doesn't it to say you're sorry to others and to God so I know that you are growing in the Lord and becoming more and more courageous every day I've been around a long time and I still have to have courage. I'm still learning courage and I still have to be courageous and ask the Lord to help me to do what I need to do sometimes. Sometimes it seems easy because I'm used to calling on the Lord. Other times it takes great courage to do what I know is right. So be courageous today. Love you guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.